for history. Again, there is no specific screening question that is asked of the donor. All of this has to be voluntary information that the donor presents. So we are, um, we are looking at the different possibilities as far as strategies uh, in a risk assessment. If it does um, prove that, uh, that XMRV is a causative agent for disease in man, that um, we will have um, things in, uh, procedures in place to um, mitigate the risk. And um, we are trying to communicate very effectively with uh, um, a lot of our partners, and include many of you on the, the um, advisory committee. Next slide. Some of our communication that has gone forward is that we have um, put forward questions and answers to um, our various websites, um, again, because CDC is the primarily, primary source for having a lot of the information for the chronic fatigue patients. Um, we uh, have worked very closely with uh, CDC, and I have to say, it's not just CDC. We have collaborated, we have um, any of our statements, we have looked to our other uh, agencies, such as the NIH and FDA, along with CDC, and have looked at the different um, the wording of our questions and also the information that is put on the website. So um, we do have a link that has been established with the Chronic Fatigue Syndrome Advisory Committee. Um, there's questions there. It will then go directly to the CDC site. And um, the CDC site has a statement that um, uh, there's a question that says, should an individual with diagnostic chronic fatigue syndrome donate blood? And the response is, at, this, at the present time, there are no specific recommendations to defer donors who have chronic fatigue syndrome. However, FDA regulations require that a donor should be in good health. Medical directors at blood collection centers should exercise judgment in determining whether individuals with a history of chronic fatigue syndrome are in good health at the time of donation. Also, there are questions and answers posted at um, NIH on the NCI website. Next slide. One of the other documents that I did provide for you is a, a fact sheet. Um, last August, the AABB, Transfusion Transmitted Disease uh, Committee, put together a supplement to the, the journal Transfusion in which they identified various uh, emerging infectious diseases or just infectious diseases that um, are known to be a threat to the blood supply. And um, they have identified those in different color codes, sort of like the uh, DHS has with the security of the country. And so um, it, it really is very well done um, as far as putting together all the, the risk factors and, and the transmission. The AABB um, started working on a fact sheet um, in December. and. Um, this is the second version. It was dated April. It has the updated uh, articles, journals, journal articles that have been, come out since um, the first science paper. And um, I give that to you also. It's available um, on the AABB website. Um, again, some of the things um, cannot be said with definitive um, statements, but at least it gives clinicians um, a, a good uh, handle on where we are at the current time with XMRV. And we will continue to be working with AABB on the communication um, mechanisms that they will be putting out and then also within the government. And as I promised you the last time I was here, as we develop no more information, we will make sure that it gets on the Chronic Fatigue Advisory Committee and also to the various links within the other agencies. Let me turn to the next slide, and that is that um, we do have an international workshop, the first international workshop on XMRV, pathogenesis, clinical, and public health implications. This is being organized by Virology Education. It will be at Lister Hill Center Auditorium on September 7th and 9th, and you can see the objectives there. Um, since it is on NIH, um, there is some relationship with NIH and this organizing um, body, the virology education, and um, 
many of us have been asked to participate on the scientific committee for this upcoming um, workshop. I think this is um, great as far as um, being able to put people together um, as far as some of the information that is currently available and I do believe that within the next several months there's even going to be more information coming available that we <laughs> do need to have a forum to be able to address some of these issues. And with that I'll just end my presentation and ask you if you have any questions for me.